Vuya, let's go straight into business now. Finance Minister Inoko Dongwana will deliver his midterm budget policy statement at a time when many South African households are stretched, with some also relying on credit to survive every month. Now, apart from major departments like education, health and social services, many citizens will want to know how government spending will change their economic fortunes in the next three years. Uh, joining me now is Anneline van der Poel from Debt Rescue. And Anneline, a lot of economists saying uh, this uh, medium-term budget policy statement happens at a time where the South African economy is looking up. Uh, the RAND has strengthened a bit for the past few months, so uh, it's a good backdrop. But if you ask a lot of consumers in their households, uh, you know, how they're feeling about uh, affairs in the economy, they'll tell you different. Times are hard, so they'll be wanting a lot of answers from the finance minister. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it definitely is looking up, but um, there's obviously always a, a, a whole bunch of factors that um, need to be considered in, in the greater scheme, macro and microeconomic. But from a consumer perspective, most definitely um, consumers are still struggling massively financially with the, the cost of living crisis. I mean, even though inflation is down, realistically speaking, uh, they're not feeling it in their pockets yet. When you have more than half of the population you know, teetering on that poverty line and a lot of people stressed in the cost of living crisis. Uh, what, in your opinion, can be uh, the focus that the minister looks at uh, for this mini budget uh, going into next year? Well, I think there's a couple of really critical items that need to be looked at. Um, one of them is obviously we need to get off of this grey list thing and, and um, make sure that we, we, we get ourselves back in a position where we're in a country where, where people want to or companies want to invest in. Um, because that's going to create job creation ultimately. And that is what we are seeking so desperately is we're sitting with massively high unemployment numbers, which is obviously contributing to, to people living be, um, below the poverty line. And uh, we need to first and foremost focus on that. And then secondly is obviously infrastructure. Um, from an investment perspective, again, the, the, the country's infrastructure is critical. This includes, um, you know, making sure that transport lines, et cetera, are working so that there is confidence to invest in this country so, to help our, grow our economy and, and make, you know, create in, an environment where people be, can become employed. When we have households in South Africa where the debt to income ratio is at around 65% in this cost of living crisis, a lot of people um, using credit, using debt in order to make it to the end of the month. Uh, what are those key policies they'll be looking out for? I mean, uh, I'm sure it's the unemployed, I'm sure it's the social grants, but on the economic growth front, what can the minister do in order to make sure that things are more favorable? Well, I think, like I said, the, the most important is, is, is make this country, um, you know, investor friendly is really, really critical um, because ultimately, you know, for us as consumers, we've seen inflation come down um, and we're obviously very thankful for that because it's, it's got the, the knock on effect of, of having that uh, slight interest rate reduction. We need to see that that continues. But, um, you know, again, we have to look at, at multiple factors that could potentially be affecting that and how that ultimately then uh, affects consumers because you know, the two-part system is, is one of the, the, the big concerns right now. How many people have actually taken it up and how this could potentially again affect inflation and then again the knock-on effect. You know, are we going to see interest rate reductions or are they going to stagnate? We know the Reserve Bank Governor is very conservative um, in, in keeping his eye on inflation. So absolutely a must that um, we need to stabilize a lot of things and, and make sure that uh, the, the focus remains on that. Well, Dead Rescue put together this note ahead of the medium-term budget policy statement, uh, and you've put food security as one of the top uh, priorities uh, for government. Why is this? What are you seeing in the numbers? Well, what we're seeing in the numbers, I think, is, is being reflected in the media as well, is the fact that consumers are not seeing the reduction in, in food prices coming down as quickly as they went up, um, uh, if they're coming down at all. And we know that there's there's commissions that are currently investigating the reasons behind this, et cetera. But uh, realistically speaking, from a consumer perspective, your food basket is, you know, inflation has slowed down, but it doesn't mean inflation that, food, uh, that things aren't going up. They're just going up at a slower rate. But we're expecting to see things like uh, the fuel price having come down for three months, that because our goods are transported by road, that we'll start seeing that effect in, in the price of goods we buy. So those are the kind of things that, are, that remain concerning, is, is the cost of living is very high as it is. Add on to that the cost of debt as well. The high interest rates, the cost of living crisis have left some households now a credit card dependent. 
uh, how do we wean ourselves off uh, those credit cards in order to make sure that, I mean, a lot of us have done the cutting, you know, in terms of the food that we buy, we've left out all the expensive bits and cut the fat. At this point, we're fully stretched. But how do we then uh, wean ourselves off the debt and the credit? Very difficult. I mean, it's completely understandable why consumers are finding themselves in this position because they are not making it from one payday to the next. They're actually not making it five days past the payday without having to incur debt, um, according to the statistics we, we've seen come from, from our major credit providers. But I think first and foremost is to first take that first step make those changes, review your, your um, expenses, look for the opportunities where you can still cut them. Obviously, if you've done that and you've made the changes, is, we've got this amazing piece of legislation in the National Credit Act whereby it assists over-indebted consumers who have done everything um, and, and, and gives them the opportunity to repay their debt, but at a lower repayment amount and making sure that they have sufficient funds left, giving them that breathing room so that they can still um, honor their debt repayments, but also afford their, their living expenses and not end up in this debt spiral ultimately. Annalene, thank you for your time this afternoon. Annalene Van der Poel from Debt Rescue there. We continue with that story.